She is perhaps the most mysterious woman in Chinese history. Despite being of the lowly merchant class, she seems to have been revered by the first emperor, Jin Shouhong. She was described by the grand historian, Sima Qian, as being the equal of any monarch. What was the secret of this unusual relationship with the emperor? The first emperor had many concubines, but made none of them his empress. Historians are agreed that he was not well disposed towards women in general. And yet he seemed to have shown extraordinary indulgence to a widow from what was then the deep south of his empire, today's Chongqing. The emperor had particularly fraught relations with his mother. By repute, a woman of strong sexual passions, she had borne two other sons to one of her lovers after the death of the emperor's father. To compound this disgraceful, illicit relationship, the lover had tried to overthrow the young Qin Shi Huang, still then king of Qin, in 238 BC. But his overt disdain for women was belied by his treatment of Va Cheng, who lived at his court as an honored guest. She was a wealthy merchant, extraordinarily wealthy, people can deduce from her position in the Cinnabar mining industry. The grand historian himself asks, was this simply on account of her wealth? What sort of person was she? Bagov是是哪个地方的人 whether Qing was her family name or her given name is still disputed. According to chronicles of Chengshou County, the Huai Qing Tower was built 15 kilometers south of Chengshou on the Dragon's Nest Mountain, while according to local folklore, she was also buried here. Now, 22-year-old,她的丈夫死掉,其他的就不清楚了。Local folklore also says that Qing's husband's great-great-grandfather was a doctor. One day, when he was out collecting herbs, he noticed reddish-brown crystals in the rocks around him. He immediately recognized this as cinnabar, the compound mercury sulfide. In ancient China, it was treasured in both philosophy and medicine for its apparently magical qualities, as well as for its fine red pigment. The family started to mine cinnabar, 
and over four generations acquired enormous wealth. Married at 18, perhaps quite late by the standards of the time, and a childless widow just four years later, with no other family members to fall back upon. This is the legend of Ba Ching. What people do know from the grand historian's writing a century after her death was that she had control of the family cinnabar mining business. This person is Yiga A business that flourished under the guidance of a young widow. A business that traded in a rare and precious substance. A business that generated a huge fortune. How could this not draw the attention of the ever watchful Emperor Qin Shi Huang, apparently elevating her for chaste and virtuous womanhood? Commemorate her after her death, the emperor built the Huai Qing Tower on top of Dragon's Nest Mountain, which then was also known locally as Chaste Woman Mountain. The district of Chengshou saw the whole site leveled during the pursuit of a modern fortune in metals with the construction of a state owned steel corporation. Build a tower to commemorate a woman, and a merchant woman, was at that time highly unusual. What was the emperor Qin Shi Huang's motive? He provided the Qin Shi Huang hundred thousand So the Emperor undertook many great projects that have shaped the history of China ever after. He was a man more feared than loved, and yet he seemed to have shown a different side to the widow Ba Cheng. Was this because, as the historian wrote, Emperor Qin saw her as a chaste woman and therefore treated her as his honored guest? Modern historians believe that the emperor's respect for Qin was rooted in a quite different reason. 
贞洁烈女，在清朝、汉朝、唐朝中，在唐朝是没有没有那个观念的，啊，汉朝的那些个皇后，很多都是二婚的，对于妇女的改嫁不当做一回事儿。哎，至于说别的妇女跟男人是不是就平等，那那还不一定，但是在妇女的改嫁这个问题上。官僚统治者都不认为是一回事儿。The ideal of a virtuous chaste widow was a concept promoted by the Manchu Qing dynasty in the 18th and 19th centuries. However, the title of widow given to Ba Qing did emphasize the fact that she was a single woman, which may have had a bearing on her special relationship with the emperor. We can guess that Ba Guo's mother was definitely a woman of the Yue dynasty. She was not only beautiful, but she was also well educated from her childhood. She was very smart, because she was such a woman. 你想中国历代的大家族在婚姻的选择是很严格的，所以对他这种好的良性的基因会遗传给他后代，所以我们想象八卦夫妻是一个才貌双全的美女。It's believed that Ba Qing single-handedly managed a great family business. The Ba state was conquered by the Qin in 316 BC. The kings of Qin then allowed the Ba nobles considerable freedom to run their own affairs. But if the first emperor was intrigued by Qing's charms, he could easily have taken her as one of his concubines. It seems this was not the case. In the historical context, the word widow in Chinese refers to a woman who lives without a husband, either after the death of her husband or after divorce. According to a decree issued by Emperor Wen of the Han, who came to the throne some 30 years after Emperor Qin Shi Huang died, if a woman over 60 does not have a son, she should be considered as a widow. Indonesia 八卦夫妻以“寡妇”两个字出名的时候啊，已经在六十岁以上。So it may be that when the emperor met Ba Qing, she was already quite old, not the sort of beauty he would have sought for his bedchamber. 那么八卦父亲家的那个失武装的话，凭我们对历史的了解的话，不会是从八卦父亲时候开始的。可能这个当上面临的威胁。在八卦父亲的先生、丈夫死了以后，他一个寡妇来撑起这个家业的时候，他可能面临更大的威胁。也就是说，他当了寡妇来撑起这个家业的时候，面对很多人的那种侵吞的那种动机，所以他要用财自卫，确保不见侵犯。所以说，我们可以理解为是八卦父亲当家以后，增加了防卫的力量。可以这么去理解。Perhaps the emperor and Ba Qing can be seen as something of kindred spirits. 
each battling fiercely to expand their respective empires, and in so doing, finding a useful ally in each other. Certainly, Ba Qing's homeland was no stranger to territorial conflicts. For hundreds of years, the Cinnabar mines would have been fought over as a valuable source of wealth. In the spring and autumn annals, compiled for the emperor's first mentor, the legendary King Yao fought along the Dan Shui River to suppress the southern barbarians. Dan Shui literally means Cinnabar water, the river being named after the Cinnabar mines nearby. Sima Qian wrote that Qing had to defend herself with her wealth. This indeed implies she had to hire guards to protect herself and her business. In those days, there could be no protection without force. From the way Sima Qian describes her, we might deduce that far from being hampered by the loss of her male family members, Qing was empowered by it. It seems that the cinnabar trade prospered as never before, and that Ba Qing established a monopoly or near monopoly position in it. As her mining, processing, and distribution network expanded, so would her renown and her overheads. So we will calculate the number. 他这支部队应该上千人，应该上千人。那么这么样的一个上千人的一个部队，他自觉去养他，要养人，要吃喝拉撒，要发武器，要训练。这支部队还要执行任务，所以一个人我们这样算，这样算，按现在人民币算，一个人假设是一年十万块钱的话，那么八卦附近一年花在私人武装上的。所谓军费，应该大概在一个亿这个样子。当然，这是一种推断。A mercenary army controlled by a widow and a mere merchant. What reason might the emperor have had for allowing such a force to exist? in violation of his other decrees. So, in the Qing War, in 316, after the Ba Gua Fu, the Ba Gua Fu and his family became the Ba Gua Fu. That is, the Ba Gua Fu. So, the Ba Gua Fu is in the Qing War. 面对的最大的敌人是谁？楚国。秦国要统一中国，最大的敌人是楚国。那么要打败楚国，你从地缘政治来看，地缘政治来看，重庆在哪里？巴郡在哪里？正是秦国和楚国的交界地带。也就是说，巴渝地区对秦国统一中原来说是它的战略后方，对秦国要统一楚国。消灭楚国来说是他的战略前方，所以秦始皇，包括秦始皇的先辈秦国的各位先王，他们对巴渝地区实行的是叫“优宠”的政策，“优”就是优待他，“宠”把他们放得很高，实行一种“优宠”的政策。
Ching's family had engaged in the cinnabar business for at least four generations. Because of the high demand for cinnabar, they built up their wealth quickly. Cinnabar was mainly used in religious or medical practice. It was an important element in alchemy and commonly used in remedies for wounds.因为漂亮的很多，也更不会因为它是寡妇，而是八卦父亲。它是单杀的化身，它是单杀的化身。所以单杀是八卦父亲身上最重要的一个符号，是八卦父亲的价值所在。那单杀第一，它是战争年代的